Mike Bernhardt reporting for the Exascale Report. We're here today with Justin Ratner, CTO of Intel Corporation. Justin, thanks very much uh, for taking the time to meet with us today. We really appreciate you taking the time from your schedule. Oh, happy to do it, Mike. So let's start off with uh, the question about Moore's Law that's come up a few times with our publication. Some people are saying that Exascale is needed because Moore's Law is coming to an end. Do you agree with this? I and mean, what is the future of Moore's Law? Well, I think, I, I think there's some confusion about what Moore's Law says, and, and, and that leads to um, you know, these, um, these assertions about you know, what, uh, what we need in terms of you know, future HPC programs. You know, in, um, when Gordon Moore, you know, Intel's co-founder, uh, first uh, described what later became known as Moore's Law, um, all he said was that the number of transistors on a chip would double. I think he probably said every 18 months, and then it, you know, it eventually sort of stretched out to every every two years. So his comment was strictly about the number of transistors per chip. Um, when we started to see um, the doubling of, of performance with each generation of microprocessors. Uh, others started to redefine Moore's law uh, to mean, oh, it's doubling of performance every couple of, of years. But in fact, Gordon never said that. Um, I, I seem to recall, oh, you know, sometime in the in the 80s, hearing people refer to that doubling of performance as Joy's law from after Bill Joy from uh, you know from Berkeley and then later from some Sun Microsystems. But sort of that. Um, that interpretation of Moore's law, I think, pretty much uh, uh, ended, uh, became invalid early in the in the last decade. You know, sort of, you know, in the 2000, you know, 2002 timeframe when we started to see microprocessors not not meeting that 2x kind of model. But in terms of transistor budgets. Um, you know, they continued to double, and in fact, I mean, the cadence was remarkably stable. I mean, literally every two years, you know, somebody would would uh, would advance that, you know, the technology at um, at that rate. Um, I think, you know, when um, when the with the issues, particularly with respect to power, began to limit things like clock frequency, um, that you know motivated us to um, to start looking at multiple cores as a way to stay under the power budget, stay within the power budget, but increase performance. And you know, I remember giving an IDF talk where I said, "Hey, you know, you reduce the you know reduce the power um, about." Um, you know, about 10 percent, and uh, I'm sorry, you reduce the frequency about 10 percent, and um, you know, you can almost double the the aggregate performance with you know with two cores, and that's why Intel started delivering dual core machines and later and later quad cores. So, um, um, but you have to have the transistor budget to build all those cores, and that that continues to be there. I, I mean, as far as the future. Um, Goes, uh, you know, we're you know we're in production at 32 nanometer. We're um, you know we've uh, shown 22 nanometer wafers, uh, um, and you know and 15 you know 15 nanometers, um, uh, you know is is uh, not far behind that on the regular on the regular cadence. So um, I just got an email, in fact, uh, from one of our uh, you know one of our um, Technologist, process technologist, and it included a table <laughs> that went out to 2022. Uh, you know, in terms of you know, in terms of projecting, um, you know, Moore's law. So, um, you know, we're we're always good for about 10 years in terms of what we can see. Um, you know, we you know we don't see any major um, you know sort of disruptions. Um, to that schedule, although you know we're starting to look um, at uh, what we call you know uh, post-charge um, electronics, where we start to look at other quantum mm -hmm. effects uh, as as the operating principle, and you know looking at spin torque transistors and graphene, and I mean all kinds of sort of interesting new technologies. But uh, I think out through the end of the decade, it's um, you know it's going to be um, silicon, CMOS. Uh, technology, maybe a few new materials, but we'll have to see. 
So, so you've got this window that takes you out there. Let's say, let's use 10 years as a round number. Um, so you're obviously seeing exascale in some form or fashion, or at least the, uh, the need for it at that point. If we look at what's going on in the United States right now, we've got the DARPA programs and the DOE programs that are the most visible. I don't know if there are any, as a matter of fact, other than those. But uh, do you see those as, as collaborating, or do you see those as competitive in some way? Oh no, I I I think um, I think they're complementary. I, I guess I'd choose that um, that word to describe them. I think you know a, a good analogy here is is uh, you know DARPA, consistent with its mission, you know, is sending out the scouts uh, to you know to explore the you know the various uh, the various ways west here. Uh, since we're in Oregon, we can <laughs> we can use the Lewis and Clark analogy, right? The scouts are out, you know, looking for you know for the um, you know for the the path to the. Uh, Pacific, and you know, some of them uh, won't make it. You know, some of them won't come back, uh, but a few will, and and that will, I think, provide um, you know a much um, you know stronger foundation on on which to um, supply the needs of the Army, if you will. And I think you know DOE sort of is in that role. Um, you know, they they. Uh, you know, don't want to be running uh, experiments so much. You know, they want to be able to, um, you know, buy machines and deploy machines that, you know, that have, um, you know, that have the performance characteristics and the re reliability and power characteristics they want. So that's why I think the two are complementary. I mean, the 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 two, um, uh, you know, agencies, if you will, have you know have complementary roles, and I think they're fulfilling them. And you know, on top. Thank you.